Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's an Apple monitor for the 2C computer. So this monitor is actually from 1984 and I got it disassembled. Of course I got all the plastic parts and metal parts and all that kind of stuff. But I got it disassembled because it is not working. There is some sort of intermediate uh, problems so when it get, uh, gets warm, it's doing all sorts of bad things. So that is what I'm going to investigate. All I did was to put back those screws so those hinges, they will work. So I can, I can work uh, on this uh, PCB and, uh, and do, the, do the thing here with the, with the PCB. This monitor actually comes in many different versions. This is the one. I think this is the last model. Uh, because we haven't got this extra PCB up here. It's all integrated down here and up here See this is a lot more compact and there, there's not so much stuff in this one so Out of the transformer. We just got this little rectifier board and the so it's actually running on low voltages The problem with this unit is also a there's another little challenge and that is this one is 115 volts AC only. It's both explained here on the inside, but it's also explained here on this rear plastic piece here. Here is this uh, rating. And as far as I know, there is no way to uh, reconfigure this. So that is a really, really bad design choice uh, Apple did back in the old, old days. They needed to have different part numbers for the main transformer uh, for Europe and for US so can you imagine that is a little bit stupid not to have uh, thought about that uh, originally right so I'm going to try and power this up and see if I can recreate the intermediate um, problem but I think I need to find a way to secure everything so I don't electrocute myself. And also, here is this brightness or contrast pot meter. And I am a little bit afraid. We got some very high voltages here, so I think I will tape it somehow. I'll put a little screw here or something. Because I want to be able to adjust on stuff and see what is going on. And I also want to access this PCB here from both sides, especially I want to look uh, with a thermal camera. But let's try and power this up and see what happens. So now I'm going to try my very first power up. I got video input from my video generator. And I think I turned this. Yes, I did. So that will be the on off switch is on. And uh, actually I just Crank up the voltage real slow and then that looks perfectly normal and then we stop at 115 so that's 24 watts so far so good let's turn off we don't see a lot No. Nope. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, this pot meter here is absolutely crap. So the brightness pot meter is just bad. Look at that, and it only works. Oh. Yeah. There's also a sink kind of problem. It's maybe not sinking on the, this frequency range. That is weird. It should work. Uh, maybe this is only working on 60. Okay, now it's getting darker and darker and darker. And we see some funny stuff, right? Yeah, look at that. Okay, but it's actually a little bit alive, but I'll definitely turn it off immediately. So here is my test picture. Definitely, we got a nice and stable picture. I was able to adjust some of the 
sync kind of things and it is actually able to capture a PAL signal so that was is very very helpful for me so all I have to do now is just uh, play a little bit and uh, see when it starts to uh, malfunction I do see when I play with the parts it's just insanely sensitive look at this see noisy pots so that's probably half of the problems what else it's nice and sharp and all that is super super good I still got a good picture and this is like 15 minutes ago or something like that and it's just keep working and working so instead of wasting my time I am now investigating temperatures on the board to see where is it warm and down here you see all those power diodes so that is of course a warm area so definitely want to look at capacitors located very near this very warm area and also I find yeah here we go so this area right here okay and let's look again and that area that'll be those two diodes and right next to those diodes they're actually in parallel if I'm not mistaken that looks like how it is right and uh, right next to them we got a capacitor as well so that is definitely what you want to change first of all and up here Look how nice and sharp a picture I can get of that area up here. And that is again two diodes. And that will be capacitors. I don't know if that... Okay, that's a ceramic capacitor, so I'm not so worried about that. Also, that, that capacitor here look a little bit brown. So that one I also want to have a look at. But so far, I just want to leave it on and see that the picture is still nice and stable. It just looks like it's just continuing to look nice and stable. I don't know. So, yeah, okay. I don't really see this blink. It's just a shutter interference kind of thing. But so far, I think we are quite lucky. All the problems seem to be potentiometer related. This one here is just the absolutely worst of course this is also the most used one look how bad it is it's just going absolutely crazy but it looks like it's a very standard um, type of pot so that could definitely be changed but the pot meters over here they're also very very oh well, not that one that one is good there yeah, I think it's because I've been poking around with them. <laughs> so now they became better. A little bit of massage and then everything is better. See some funny shades. That is a little bit weird. Can you see this? Uh -huh, Aha, see. This has something to do with brightness and con contrast adjustment. So this one needs to go all the way up here. So this is not happening, and then you can crank down this one, yes. And then you'll get a nice monochrome image. I could, of course, try and connect my Apple to z <laughs> That could be fun. This screen is actually really, really nice and sharp. Here is this resolution tester, including a uh, grayscale bar. And if I zoom in on this area, I'm sorry about this uh, shutter interference, but let me zoom in here and show you how sharp it actually is at the very fastest line. About this uh, 
problem. I think I have, see, I have found something. I don't know if you can see this in the video, but if I carefully, see, hammer a little bit here on the middle of the PCB, you can see the picture go, Whee! look at that, huh? See, right there in the middle of the PCB. Jumpy, jumpy. So I need to find exactly where that, here it is. That is difficult to find. I think this is very, very difficult to uh, video document. But I went through all the solderings, more or less, all the way around the PCB. Uh, and I did, did this uh, solder, soldering Y massaging with my soldering iron. Um, so I was like scratching a little bit on both the pad and the, the pin on everything here while I was uh, adding new solder and all that kind of stuff. And look at that. Now I can't recreate the problem. <laughs> so it was just re-solder job. I don't know how hard I need to to hit. Probably not gonna create a new loose connection, but look at that. It is just so super, super stable now. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. <laughs> I'm in the middle of assembling this thing and uh, I did not take it apart. So you can imagine this is a little bit funny to figure out how to assemble it. But I think actually I did manage quite a ride. Got this little metal shield down here on the bottom that was first. And then this plastic shield here. And it's really, really cool with the way that it's designed with this thing that slides in this top plastic thingy and that closes in here. And then this bottom plate goes on to, to hide all the screws and everything. And of course the on off switch and uh, the pot meter here, they go in last. And here's the challenge to get that screw up there. Can you see the screw there? Ooh, difficult. That one's gonna be a lot easier. I just hope I don't drop it. <laughs> and it's of course the same thing in the other side. Access those screws and then do a little bit of funky, funky stuff. But that's a little bit typical Apple, you know, super sexy design that is that wins over easy to assemble and easy to disassemble. That's just how it is. Here's a very short trick. Just let gravity work for you instead of against you. So put the monitor on the side while you're playing around with those two screws. As you see here, now they're not falling anywhere. They're falling exactly where they're supposed to be, right? Duh. So I've put in the, the Apple game or play game or game thing. And then I just turn on the monitor first and uh, wait for it to warm up a little bit. And then turn on the computer and it will boot up like this and of course it works and the picture is just absolutely fantastic we can play all sorts of games financial tools lemonade music thingy space quarks so the idea is you hit six and then enter and then it will uh, load the game yeah And look at that. Here we go. It's just like 1984 again. It says hit any key to start a game. Oh, look at that. So how do I, how do I not die? 
How do I control this? Oh, here we go. So that is fire. So what is it? Left, right? Yes, left, and then, then it goes all the way to the left. And then what? How do I go the other way? Okay. So it goes all the way like that. Okay. <laughs> An amazing gameplay. All you have to do is just fire. But you can't... Oh, oh dear. I am absolutely bad at this.